everybody i think we're ready i think we're live let me figure out how to turn this off i may need to do one thing probably need to move my computer up so i'm not looking as far down when ah i cannot think and run a computer at the same time hey welcome to hometown music uh this is guitar hunter live this is episode 147 i believe which is super fun uh, i'm excited that y'all are here let me know does the audio sound good everything looks like it's working all right yeah everything looks good so <clears throat> we've got a condenser I have an aston origin right here out of frame i figured that would be better audio as we show some acoustic guitars so how are you who are you where are you coming from and uh what are you most excited so all of the guitars that came none of them are the standard series so there's no american there yes yeah, so we have no 15s there's one 15. We don't have any of the 15M, 16, 17, or the 18 on up yet. But we got about 30 guitars. Uh, it has been a frantic day of like running through. There are some that are already out uh, because we weren't going to hold selling all of these um, until I did Guitar Hunter Live. So there are some of them, but these will all be out by the end of the day today. And if you want to buy any of these, we are now a full marquee. I don't know if we're... We're a full line uh, Martin dealer and... Um, we're super excited about our partnership with Martin. We're excited to work with them to find cool guitars, to find opportunities for people to own guitars. My whole life is different because of Martin guitars. Um, my first one was a Martin D15, and I mowed every yard in Shenandoah, in Rockingham County, uh, in the Shenandoah Valley. It's not true, but every yard that would let me, I mowed in uh, in my neighborhood growing up. So, hey, looks like a bunch of people are here. Let's see. Um, not even Neil Young has got enough Martins. Ain't that the truth? Um, this old guitar. Uh, Jeremy will only have enough Martins when he becomes the next CEO of CF Martin and Company. I'm I'm into that. I uh, know who do CEO. That would that's a rough gig because um, crap seems to roll uphill in most of those kinds of jobs. So yeah, uh, I think the key issue is what Martins they buy. Uh, for unique market there in Virginia, in the mountains in Virginia, I'm thinking 15s and 16s and a few higher end uh, D18s. Yeah, 28s. If I'm if I had to pick one guitar that I know I could sell in the Shenandoah Valley, it would be a D28. Like we can probably sell four to six a year. That's really optimistic. Um, but I used to sell a lot of them. I would sell a D28 or an HD28 or a golden era D18 or like a, like a more spendy 18 or 28. I would, I would sell one a month uh, when I worked at a guitar shop. Um, yeah. Here in the Valley. Let's see. Schuer is here. Love the new Martin X series. Yeah, they're great. 
Um, they're really fun. There are some things that are really surprising. We both, uh, Stephen might pop in here at some point if I can make him. Um, Stephen really liked, we have the Johnny Cash. We'll look at that here in a couple minutes. It was amazing. There's so much sustain on that guitar, um, which, yeah, is wild. Um, always have more room for another, yeah. That's like the how many guitars, N plus one, N equals the number of guitars you have now. Um, let's see, I only own three. Yeah, that's a, that's plenty. Um, oof, the D18. Yeah, the one in the thumbnail, my authentic. It was here Wednesday, uh, but I took it home. It's not here today, but uh, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone from Darcel. Hello, thank you. Um, if you see that little logo by Darcel's name, that means that they're a channel member. So I'm thankful for channel members and patrons. That's like one of that's the backbone of how these videos get made, and how just like the basic bases get covered financially for making these videos uh if you saw the studio tour video that went out this week you can see like there's a million little things behind the scenes that just make the videos look better and sound better and uh and so those are the things that i'm really thankful for so let's see uh a has uh has one martin a d18 from 2007 a standard that's a great guitar and uh yeah chris you want to say hi this is my friend chris chris owns hometown music and uh yeah this is also Chris's Mesa right behind me. And uh, yeah, so if you want a Mesa Boogie, that's the exact opposite of a Martin. Uh, <laughs> we'll cut you a deal. And I will drive within 100 miles to find, 50 miles to find somebody. But You wouldn't walk 500 miles? Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. to beat mm -hmm. the Mesa <laughs> at your door. We'll bring, a, ma we'll bring <laughs> a Mesa to your door. Let's yeah. see. Uh, coming in from Ontario, Canada, we have an HD28 and a D18 SS. Ooh, the SS is a, I think, two S's, one S. I guess you would, anyway, um, the minutia, the details. Kramer's here, hey, how are you? Adam Willis is here. Um, Adam Willis Wilkes. Uh, Zephyr Illis, Florida, what a name. Zephyr Hills, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Not Zephyr Illis. It's just because you've been spending so much time. Gosh. Looking at spreadsheets. Oh, yes. Zero, 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 yeah, yeah. D, X, K, one. <sighs> quick, quick glimpse into the world of running a music store. For the first three months of every year, every music store is re-upping with every brand we carry. So we are just, you know, trying to figure out, okay, what, what, yeah. What new things came out at NAM? What are we going to carry? When are we going to carry it? You know, is the you know. but even things that you reorder, they will change the part numbers or the Sometimes, SKUs yeah. or like, yeah. so it's just constant <laughs> spreadsheets. I thought there would be a slight, a slight change to the name of a finish or the finish yeah. is ever so slightly different. That's true. Bluegrass like, versus herringbone for right. Alvarez. Yeah. Oh yeah. But it's... yeah, let's see. Hi from Wet Paisley. Coming in from Scotland, that's awesome. Coming in from Holland, uh, Wisconsin, Melbourne, Florida. Uh, this is huge news. It is huge news that there are so many Martins here. Um, very cool that you're a Martin dealer. We're super excited too. Um, Martin's not bringing on many dealers, so it means a lot to us that we would that we would get to do it. Um, yeah. So, uh, did I hear no American Maids today? Uh, no. Not in the Martins. We don't have... So our, the way that Martin ordered... The way they do their orders is that they have all their fulfillment of the Mexico stuff comes in one order, and then all the American stuff comes in second, and that will come more onesie twosies yeah. through the year. Well, I get, and I get the impression that, you know, the American stuff is a little more made to order. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's there's not a ton of the, of the, the Nazareth stuff just sitting on a shelf somewhere. Yeah. Um, so we will we will get it as as they're batching stuff out, which works better for us in yeah. the and it works better for people. Like we get to keep more momentum. Like yeah. we have one D eighteen. Who wants it? Um, yeah, it, it would be overwhelming. We had a friend, uh, we had a friend here in town in the two thousands, uh, Josh, who became oh, a Gibson, Gibson dealer, dealer. <gasps> and he all of a sudden he had one hundred and forty Gibsons show up from standard up. Like he didn't get any studios. Right. It was just like standard custom shop customs. And it was overwhelming. He also didn't get any say in what he did or didn't get. Yeah. Basically, they said, give us a check for this amount of money. And when he went out of business, <laughs> when he went out of business because he couldn't sell $180,000 worth of guitars that fast, 
um, they started selling his list to other dealers, undercutting him, saying like, hey, I'll give you half of what you paid for it, yeah, dealer cost. That's the real shady part. Ouch. That was old Gibson. This is rough business, people. Sorry. Rough, rough business. So, if you can count how many Martins you have, do you have enough? Yeah, 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 yeah. I own one Martin right now. I just own one really expensive Martin. That's yeah, my strategy. I want a little more context to that question. Count, like, can the, sh the shop count or Jeremy count? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, technically, <laughs> yeah, if we count those, it's like all of a sudden it's like 60. So, maybe not. There's like, what, 30 or so came in? So 20 across couple? Across the models, that sounds about right. Yeah, so uh, here in a minute, I'll, we'll keep saying where everybody's coming. Portland, Tennessee. Um, Tennessee has all of them. Paris. Uh, yeah, all of the... It's got to be the World's Fair thing they do. There's a Lebanon mm -hmm. thing. That makes sense. That makes, you know, I always love Tom I mean, Segura's there, there bit. There is a he's Parthenon like, he's in like, the middle of Nashville. Which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, which it's like a... It's, I used to think it was at scale, but it's one-to-one. No, it's, one. Yeah, it is, it is an exact replica of the Parthenon just sitting in some park. I love Tom Segura's thing. He's like, the balls on Paris, Ten or Paris Tennessee. Bonjour! <laughs> <laughs> no, please, no proclaimers, please. Okay, all right, we're skipping New Zealand. Holy cow. So you're watching this from the future. It's tomorrow. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Sweden here. Man, this is crazy. Um... Yeah, Parkersburg, West Virginia. Mr. J.D. Ray, he's been here before. Um, you met him when he was here. He came through last summer. Okay. Um, Grandview, Missouri. That's awesome. Mr. John Washburn. Dublin, Ireland. That's crazy. Gibson acting like a-holes? You don't say. Yeah. Hey, hey, we're here to talk about Martin. Yeah. Um, There's no... We did talk about yesterday. Somebody asked me if I could, if I would, gun to my head, I have to get a tattoo of a Gibson or of a guitar brand or like a musical instrument brand, what would I do? And I was like, oh, I would probably do either the Gibson flower pot or like the Martin Fender of like Fountain of Life thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, you just then, you wouldn't just get a, that a or, Gibson headstock as a tramp stamp? Oh, Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was just the whole... <laughs> that or the Schechter logo, I might do that. Just between, I my, between my shoulder blades. Sure. I don't know. Uh, sorry, this is a family friendly channel. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So let's see. Andy still needs to pick up a Martin. You do. Andy, I'll send you one when I send you your Telecaster back. So, yeah, let's get some guitars. Um, currently have a road series, and I sure do miss my D42. Whoa, that's a big, that's a big swing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's jump into some. Um, make sure you subscribe. There's still 88% of people that watch this channel aren't subscribed. Hit a thumbs up. There's also, um, I've added a couple links in the description. One of them is if you at any point in your life need to stream video like this, the software I use is called StreamYard, and it's a pretty good affiliate link for me, and it's a pretty helpful tool for you. So if you're doing these things, if you're presenting stuff at work, it's a really helpful tool because you can do stuff like this. Like you can pull up comments, and it shows what people are saying and where they're coming from. So it's really helpful. So anyway, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, that's all I've got after this. If you want to, if you see a guitar in here and you want to buy it, you want to own it, you can email us uh, or you can call us. I'll put the phone number and the email. Which email should we use? Info at hometownmusic.net. Uh, talk to us. There we go. Let's do talk that one. Talk to us. Um, hometownmusic.net. I'll put it in a... You know, tickers. most of the tele, or, you know, the the scam email, whatever's, they haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> Probably just ruined it. Uh, talk to us. At... Typing is hard. Well, you know, I still haven't figured out walking and chewing bubble gum. Okay. Boom. There we go. So. That is a way to call us or talk to us, and we'll be here. Um, we're also we're just in the middle of the shop, so four one five nine. Oh, hey, that's that's important. But let me edit it. Four one five nine. Okay, there we go. Ta da! All right, yeah. So you could literally call us in real time. You won't get us. You'll get Stephen. And he might not be into that. 
operators are standing by. Um, no, I used to do, <laughs> I had to stop doing it. I haven't talked about it since. I did a like, call me now, ask your questions. And it went bad, as you would expect. Because <laughs> I had no one buffering calls. And I would just answer on speakerphone. And like the video got demonetized. And I got uh, like a channel strike um, okay. for what the person said. And it, it was able to just like delete that episode. But uh, yeah, thanks for talking about Satan, you know. <laughs> Anyway, hopefully that doesn't trigger anything. Um, what was the price to become a Martin dealer? Uh, I don't think we're legally allowed to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was not small. Yeah. Um, but is it? Yeah, it's a it's, thing. You know, I. It's. Uh, it's it's a business investment. You know, I mean, it's it, it's it's enough that Martin is sure that we're, not just. Uh, mm -hmm around but mm -hmm. you know it's it's enough that we have skin in the game in it and like yeah yeah but it's also i mean the the plan is we are partners yes like we have Very to so. it has to be good for them it has to be good for us and it has been so far yeah. we're excited about it yeah. so and, and um, I, I will hand it to them you know talking talking with them and in the, in the, the courtship phase of leading up to this you know i mean they do a number of things that you know with with as far as being a good partner to the dealer you know i mean if if we get guitars that for whatever reason it just does you know it just doesn't connect with our audience they're they're willing to help us out and try to, yep. to you know i mean they're they're very much in we want to be good stewards of the martin brand yeah and they want to be you know making sure that they're they're making a product that we can stand behind and that yeah. we can because there are, and like, we'll talk about them today, there are models that when I was not a dealer, and my opinion is not going to change on these, but like the X series has always been a little, like, I've been timid about them, but I've sold them. I know who they're for. I'm just not that person, but uh, we are super excited about, about these. We also went more into like the juniors and the little ones. So anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel I feel sick watching this with my tailor staring at me with a puzzled look. Yeah. We did not become Taylor dealers. No, we did not. Which that's that would not be it would not work. Taylor is very actively selling against their own dealers, so they're not adding many dealers these days. But all right, let's jump into a couple. Um, we're just gonna go kind of random, and uh, we'll jump through some stuff. Some of these now we had to make sure these. This isn't like a proper unboxing because right. <laughs> we did not want to risk. Like, telling the FedEx person or the freight person, like, it's fine. And then finding stuff that's, like, broken headstocks and smashed. So everything got looked through yeah. a little it bit. It ha happens rarely, but it happens. I've, I have opened a box that where the box looks immaculate. Yeah. You open it up and you go, well, the guitar should go this way, and mm -hmm. in the wrap goes that way. Oh, yeah. That was recent. That we, was. Um, and uh, rare, rare. I had one. I had a very expensive guitar that I did at Instagram Live for... Uh, for hometown, and while I'm oh, playing it, it wouldn't that. it wouldn't stay in tune. Like, what's wrong? And then I look and I saw a headstock crack like opening up. It's like, oh gosh. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm you know good to see you. So, uh, okay, Christopher, this is. We'll start with the with the X series. Wow, this thing's pretty. Yeah. Um, this one is literally out of the box, not in tune. Perfect. Um, this is what an X1E. Yep. I think. Let me see. Uh, can't see it's too dark. Did you read it? Oh, a DX2. So, solid spruce top, definitely not in tune. The yeah, they all have the tuners. How do you tune? How do you turn those on? Push a button. Okay. Maybe. Thanks for tuning in today while we figure out how a guitar works. Yeah. Thank you. They have tuners in them. And we don't know how they work yet. <laughs> yeah, there's a little piece of plastic that... Anyway, these are also... They're all... They have the stickers for the 35th anniversary, which is exciting. So, okay. I'll handle some questions. Saki loves his junior. Um, yeah. So, let's see. Hello from Northern Nevada. Hey, oh, three Martins here. A 99 DM. Great guitar. A 54017T, a tenor. That's awesome. And, holy cow, a, a 1942 0018. The last two were recent estate, fail, estate sale finds at $15. And $600? Oh, 
paid 600 bucks for a triple O 18 from 42. Um, I will let, I'll double your money right now. I'll send you a label and uh, triple your money. Okay. You drive a hard bargain. So hello, fuzzy jacks. What a name. Just tuned in. Hi, Jeremy. Hello. All right. So here's the DX two. That has Not actually. Dots. That actually sounds fantastic. It's a good sounding guitar. So it's, um, I was noticing, got a good wood bridge mm -hmm. and a wood fingerboard and abalone dots. Those are pretty, like really green. I'm gonna let you have fun. Cool. I'm gonna save Steve. Thank you. So there's only there's yeah, only two of us. Chris technically is floating between all the businesses. So Man, good sounding guitar. Um Right. Hang on, I'm gonna go back to the settings I had it when it was just me. All right, there we go. So the Road Series, I've always, and I've said this a bunch of times, I've always been stressed out um, by the X Series that doesn't have binding on the top because in the past when they take a hit on the corner, they'll split. Um, but these are definitely different. They have a much bigger bevel than they used to have. They used to just have like a little round over on the edges, but these have like, it's about a quarter inch. That's an actual bevel, um, here on the sides. So this is an exciting guitar. Okay. There's the button. Chris, the button is like on the inside of the volume. Oh. So you, okay. that's cool. And this is right there. So if this is basically like the most affordable of the, like a solid top, I mean, I would be pretty happy with this. Um, it is, there's an interesting thing here. Let me see if I can show you up close. So can you see right there by my fingers? Um, hang on. Can't get it to focus. But what I'm trying to show you is right there. Okay, you can kind of see it. There is a gap right up there where the fingerboard meets the body. And um, it's because they bevel the whole top. So with that one, it's definitely, that's the thing like if you were picky, but when I was building my show altar with Steve, that was a big thing he wanted to make sure was he had like a total square. That's the only place on a guitar that really stays that square because you always lose because of the radius and then the curve of the sides, you rarely get like actually 90 degrees. But anyway. Exciting, exciting guitar with the pickup, with the tuner. Oh, hey, that button clicks on, clicks off. Would it would it torch your battery if you left it on? Which you're gonna leave it on. But anyway, okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna hang this up and come back. Here's another one that I used to think was lame and now I think it's pretty cool. Here is the X series Johnny Cash. This one's only 650 bucks. And um, this is the one that Steven and I both really liked. That is ridiculous. Two, three, four, five, six. There's so much. Two, three. 
it just rings forever. So yeah, this is the this is the affordable version. It's got a Stratabon neck. Um, but same pickup, doesn't have the tuner. But this is the 35th anniversary of the Mexico with the Johnny Cash. It's got the star inlays. This thing is pretty cool. Is the neck heavy? No. It's still, there's still more weight on the body of the guitar. It's not that heavy overall. I mean, I would bet it's probably six pounds. It's heavy for an acoustic guitar. Not as heavy, like my Showalter's really heavy. My Showalter's, actually, I should remember this because I did that video where I did how much my guitars cost per pound. Um, never found that cash guitar had that good of a sound. I haven't played a whole lot of them. So uh, this is a little buzzy if you play like a lunatic. Hey, you have a track? Boy. Okay. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, a palette of Alvarez guitars just showed up too. <laughs> so So uh, in addition to Martins, which you know are fantastic, we also have all these beautiful Alvarezes. Oh man. There's there's an L D there, there's an L D seventy in there. That's awesome. L D oh ooh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's the new Laureate series that are awesome. Okay, man, that's awesome and exciting. So uh, the show is all a bit crazy because uh, we're in the shop. It's Friday afternoon. People are coming and going. Uh, Vinny, one of our guys, is out on a bachelor party for his bachelor party weekend. And then Chris is supposed to be next door. And then we got a shipment of guitars. We got a shipment of Fender stuff this morning. And then we've got Alvarez now. <sighs> so if I seem sweaty... I didn't plan on wearing a Martin shirt, but I sweat through my other shirt, um, getting ready for the live show. So. Play some Isbell, okay. Hang on. Let's see, so it's hard for me to not be judgmental of the X-Series after seeing how much plastic was in the back and sides from Driftwood Guitars Breakdown. I mean, it's true. Like, it definitely is a guitar that has plenty of, um, oh, it's right here. Um, it's just these empty boxes on it. And then the other one is over there with some drum stuff on it. It's right here? No, hang on, it's in the back, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> <laughs> It's just running around. Madness! <sighs> um, yeah, I, so I get it, uh, but I think the X series, like, you have to own that. Like, I'm not going to say it's not countertop material, but I'm going to say this guitar has been around for 20 years. They've endured really well, and they still have so much more bass and low end. So, if you want a bassy acoustic guitar um, under a thousand bucks, there are more options now, but there are still really good options in the in the X series. So I'm I'm, yeah. I've not been a big fan. I, I usually don't like the goofy prints on them. That bothers me. Um, but I don't know why that bothers me any more than it just being black or it being whatever. There, there's a Koa one here. I'll grab and I'll show you. And then we've got, we do have a 15 that I want to open. It's the D15E. So here's one that I think I actually like. Um, this is the Koa print on the HP or on the HPL. So this is a DX1. So this is like the entry level, 
But uh, that's a good bassy sounding guitar. on a guitar same thing has a pickup has all the stuff stratabon neck okay trying to keep track of gig bags let's go a total different direction one of the things i'm really excited about um, we have a huge population of people that, that play ukuleles in the Shenandoah Valley. Um, part of it is through James Madison University as a program where they teach a lot of, uh, yeah. Oh, so many Alvarez coming in. Have you seen this too? Yeah. <laughs> Look how pretty that thing is. So, so this is the C1K. So this is their C1 ukulele in Koa. And uh, this one, I mean, just sounds magical. Uh, it's super bright and has a lot of like thickness. Okay, so C1K. This one's like $4.99. Like, not crazy for an all solid. Is this made in America? Made in Mexico. So, yeah, made in Mexico. I just think this thing's so pretty. There are so many. Like an entire pallet, another pallet of guitars just appeared. So, there's so many guitars. Okay, let's do a D10. Or, hang on. No, let's do something cool. Not that the D10's not cool. This is probably the most exciting. There are two of these that I think are the coolest and most exciting that came in this week. And uh, so, bada bing bada boom, there's an SC13. Let's pull this thing out and look at it. So, the SC13. I've only played one of two of these, maybe. Um, I played one at IBMA a while ago. So this is the SC13 with the Koa back. Now this one is interesting. The Koa, it almost looks like oven call. Like it's not that dark or that like rich in the color or that figured in the. Looks a little better inside, but. James, coming in from Lebanon, Missouri. That's awesome. Glad you're here. Um, yeah, so the, S the SC-13. 
cool. Huge, uh, huge access to the neck. It's a bolt-on neck. It's cool to see kind of, uh, to see Martin kind of own that. The, the action on this is like effortless. Guitar. I'm, I haven't tried this uh, plugged in yet, but big fun guitar. All right, I'm gonna go sneak this one over there on the wall. Uh, oh, thank you, Chris. Um, I have a D10E to open over here, and then a D15, and then there's a bunch of others. There's some little Martins over there I haven't opened. Um, yeah, let's keep going. So this one, we've not pulled out at all, so we'll see if it's in tune. Nope. Some fared better. <laughs> Some fared better than others. One of the things you have to do, and I didn't think too much about this, like transitioning from being like a YouTuber and a guitar enthusiast that reviews and checks out guitars into working, you know, several days a week working at a retailer is like there's a level of scrutiny you have to look at these guitars with that feels rude when you are like coming from being a YouTuber. There's this whole thing. Like it feels like when a guitar comes to your house and you didn't pay for it and you got it as a like in exchange. Um, it feels like a gift and it feels rude to look too closely but with these like we are buying them to then resell them so anyway there's a little scratch on this one um, that we'll have to see but the d10 has a rich light bridge and fingerboard has binding around the top this is probably the closest thing to like the old dms um yeah but this is better than that uh has a scarf joint in the neck which is interesting not that i'm not opposed to that um, but Martin traditionally, I, I don't mind the Stratabon next, but the scarf joint, there's a big color difference. But that's really pretty mahogany on the back. So, the Road series. Seems good, seems exciting. The Martin, the Martin E1. I don't like this rosette. That's probably my main thing that I don't like. Very toilet seedy. Is that real mahogany? Um, what do you mean by real? It does exist. Um, no, it does. It does look like Kaya, but it's definitely stained a little darker to look more like mahogany. But I would bet it's African mahogany if you really dug into the spec sheet. I meant to print off a price list. Do we have one? I don't think we do. A price list. Yeah, I print it out. This one's real mahogany. That one is, yeah. Chris is walking by with the Yari. Actually, that was on the channel, the Yayiri, the FYM60. Um, that's the best recording. That's like one of the best recording guitars. And your, the Yayiris. They both, oh, that's what he's playing over there. Um, yeah. So the D10, I mean, this is a fun, that's a lot of guitar. The inch and three quarters, definitely different. The old um, late 90s Martin DMs, the D2Rs or DR2, whatever all those are. Um, it's big, it feels a little tight. I'm sure it would open up. So. Let's 
Steven, can I show you something? Steven, can I show you something? Sorry. So that one, just that little scratch. I'm going to see if we can see anything else. That's the only thing I found so far looking at any of them. I don't know how that would have happened. Maybe the zipper in the gig bag or something? Alrighty, I'm gonna sneak around here and grab the D15. Yeah, it's... I've scratched wood like that on accident with my nails. Yeah. Out. Okay. I don't think it's a problem, but... So far, the quality... I don't know. I can get your opinion. Here, come sit here for one second. I want to ask you a question. All right. There are too many boxes around. This is my friend Steven. You, you guys have seen Steven before. Um, so, talking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I know me. it's up there, and then it's just your forehead. Yeah. Okay, so can you talk about, like, how how closely do you have to look at guitars? Like, when they're coming in, what are you looking for? Oh, dude. I mean, basically, I start from one spot on the guitar and then follow the perimeter all the way around until I get back to that one spot. Then I flip it over, do the same thing again. Um, yeah, some stuff's usually pretty straightforward when there's something wrong, but um, sometimes scratches can hide in the finish and mm -hmm. or cracks potentially too. So yeah, yeah, you gotta kind of because you're really like some of the things I've some of the things I've seen you catch are like the fretboard extensions to make sure the finish is all the way in tidy, yeah. all the way up against. There was a you have to look at that the whatever the fourth one in there. Um, it had a level of the whole body is beveled around the whole top, but then they put the neck on there super straight. Yeah. So there's this little triangle. Yeah. It's like you can tell that they're doing all the bodies first. Um, I mean, they're kind of streamlining what they do there. So, yeah, you can sometimes see a little bit of relief going into the pocket where yeah. the neck and the body come together. Because that would have to be a compound. Like, keep it crispy here and then fade in. Mm-hmm. That's much more. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way to get a guitar at five ninety nine. Mm hmm. That is that is that level. Definitely. Sweet. Uh, what's the other? <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, well. All right, let's do a D fifteen. So, this is the D fifteen E. The D fifteen, the fifteen series is kind of split. Like the fifteen E is made in Mexico. The 15M and the triple OM, the SM, they're all made in Pennsylvania. So it is pretty interesting seeing that this that this model is kind of split between two productions. But I mean look at that thing. Like that looks like a 15M. Um, it's got the dark tuners. Um, they are open gear tuners as well. I mean, come on. Hey, look at those tuners. Bad headstock. You gotta get it in front of my face. So this one is $12.99. Um, I did pull this one out earlier because somebody wanted to look at it um, earlier. But the back is that more kind of ribbony, sapelli looking. But Someone called that a level one relic, Stephen. Oh. That scratch. So 
so how come you how come none, how come that came with the Mexico order? Do they ship from Pennsylvania to Mexico to Virginia uh, for just the case? Let's see. So they come from I I would assume these came from Pennsylvania. So I'm assuming they're going from Mexico to there's probably some QA QC stuff happening in Pennsylvania, and then they get sent to us. The awesome thing is we're in the same zone, so everything it ships like from the time it ships. It's the next day. Same thing with PRS for us. We're really close to Bethlehem and Ibanez. Ibanez comes from just outside of Pittsburgh. Ben Salem, Bet Salem. Ben Salem. Ben Salem. I went to high school with Ben Salem. Uh, uh, but yeah, Ben Salem, Pennsylvania for Ibanez. So all that stuff comes to us within a day, which is great. Which is also an advantage to you if you have something that you want us to order, we can get it to you super quickly because it just helps being on the East Coast. Fender stuff. Sometimes shows up months before they tell you it'll be here. Uh, there are some things we ordered that they're like, it'll be done in August. And then they invoice us like a week later. Uh, we, speaking of which, we just got a uh, American Vintage. There it is. An American Vintage, uh, the 51 Telecaster. Um, no, that's the Ventera. Uh, it's, up, it's up top over here, Chris. Um, but... Yeah, so, yeah, Nazareth does the QC. Ben Salem is outside of Philly. I didn't know that. I was outside of Pittsburgh. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, so here's the... I'll trade you. <laughs> yeah, so here's the American Vintage 51. Here's a nerdy thing that bothers me. So this is a 51, which is a no-caster, but it's called a Telecaster... But it's a 51 spec, like a big U-shaped neck. It doesn't have the dark circuit on the neck. This guitar has an identity crisis. Or it's just, it's a no-caster. It's not a... Oh, Maury's music is here. That's awesome. Hey, Maury. Um, it's always sunny in Ben Salem. Hey, buddy. I sent you an email yesterday. So, uh, am I saying that wrong? Ben Salem? Ben Salem? I don't know. It, it feels like a word that should be pronounced not. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, yeah, so. I'll back you up on that question. How backed up is Nazareth on Triple O 15 SM builds? I think they're two, it was four to six weeks, I think was the lead time that I heard. I'm not totally sure. Um, so, yeah. I would, I'd be up for, we've ordered a couple of those because I really like those guitars. So if you want one, let me know and I can get a better answer on, on the timeline. I know you have a triple O fifteen, Terry. Um, yes, Maury's does rock. Maury, thank you. I want to come see you. You're not far. I was looking up your address yesterday because it's like maybe three hours from here. So it'd be fun to come up and see you at some point. Um, Ben Sale M. Oh, got your email and reply today. Oh, good. Yeah, it's, it's been wild here. We just had guitars showing up all day, so I have not seen my email. Um, but, yeah. Let's see. All right. I don't know if I'd buy a 51 with, with the dark circuit. That's. I mean, that's true. Yeah. Yes, visit. Okay, yeah, I'll try and figure out. I, I have one day off a week. And I usually try and run and do fun stuff on that day. So that'd be fun to come up and hang. Um, hey, yeah. Oh, you. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood what you said. You would want the dark circuit. That's kind of awesome. It does. It does handle... He says it handles fuzz really well. So, okay. Um, do you guys want to see any more Martins? We have Little Martins. I think that's... Little Martins. There's a triple O ten over there. There's also one of the brand new Alvarez uh, laureates, one of the Dreads and Rosewood. That's what we probably should look at. Um, that's a an amazing guitar. Um, if you haven't seen the laureate series so far, laureate, laureate, um, they're really fun. They are all solid. They're kind of the masterworks up a level. They really split the difference between that and then the Yairi stuff. So the Yairi stuff is thirty four hundred three thirty three hundred. Um, and the Laureates, they're really trying to go up against the Taylor 2 series. And I think, to me, the 2 series is fun. 
Um, they're a good sounding pickup. They're a pretty guitar, but they really lack low end and bass. The Laureates are really punchy and really warm sounding. They feel and sound more like a handmade guitar. Um, so yeah. Acoustic Friday. All right, I'll put this one away. It is funny. People have some opinions when I talk about electric guitars. Mostly that everybody talks about electric guitars and they just want me to talk about acoustics. I don't know how the light keeps changing. Somehow it keeps getting overexposed even though I'm not changing anything. I'm getting paler in real time. That's, that's why we're here. <laughs> All right. Let me see. Uh, any Scott Brown? Scott, hi, hello. Scott's a local guy. He's here in town. Any double O, triple O, eighteens or twenty eights coming? Uh, no double O, eighteens or twenty. No double O's right now. We didn't do those on our first order. Um, we have a triple O, eighteen coming, probably June or July, if I had to bet. Um, we have an OM twenty eight coming, not a triple O. Um, did an OM for the longer scale length. Um, and then I think that's about it. And then we've got lots of triple O 15 M's, SM's, the 12 fret version, um, all those. Get the Laureate. Okay. Next year they will be up. They will be up at that price. Lots of guitar for the money. Okay. Let me, I'll see if I can grab it. Um, yeah. Let's see. D18 or triple O 18 for you. I like both. Um, the Triple O 18 has been the best-selling guitar for Martin for the last five years of the Standard Series because a Triple O is really comfortable. The shorter scale length is really sweet. Um, they're a beautiful thing. So, yeah, I would definitely get that. Um, so Glenn got a Yairi Honduran FYM 66 HD, and it's absolutely amazing. That's one that I would definitely love to get. Um, they've been out of stock the last couple times we've looked. I think that's a great guitar. Um, it is. It always is a gamble to for a shop to get a mahogany top at that price because they usually sit for a while. Oh, here's one that I haven't shown you that I'll grab or, real quick. So here is the newest addition to the Street Blaster series. Uh, this is uh, the triple or the the D10 Junior. The D Junior 10 Streetmaster. So this is a mahogany top on the on the little body. And is that the Laureate? Baritone eight string. Awesome, I love this. Um, could you get the? Is the F Y D no the L? Gosh, Alvarez. Oh, no, I want the the L D the L D seventy. That's the Rosewood Dread, right? Laureate Dread seventy Rosewood and Spruce. Yeah, this is genuinely just got off the FedEx. This came FedEx freight. I just got here. Oh. There you go. I don't know this. this is just so much chaos. Ooh. Someone needs a, a photo of you. I know. <laughs> Dave Pounce says, are the X series made in China? They are not. They are made in Mexico, and Maury's Music answered that too. So, uh, yeah, made in Mexico. Um, any lefty D18s? Uh, no. I can order you one. Um, you'd have to commit. You'd have to put. You'd have to buy it beforehand. Um, we have some lefties. We have a surprising amount of lefties, but most of them are electric guitars, and they're on consignment. Um, we have a friend who owns a studio. So, okay, this is the Alvarez. This is the Laureate. So this is the LD70. So, um, daybreak finish. So it has that kind of burst look to it. That makes it look a little older. And then has rosewood back and sides. That's a good looking set. Rosewood's so straight, kind of purpley. This guitar, it's still chilly. It's not cold outside, but it's like cool from being on a truck.
I've got a tuner right here. I guess it's one of those things that can't be the same either way. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, but it has to. Okay, so let's see. Let's see your favorite acoustic guitar in the shop. If you haven't showed it already, it's actually. Um, this might be it. Uh, there's a folk version of the the LF60. It's the Hunter. That's it's a mahogany one. I really like that guitar. Um, if I had to pick my favorite acoustic in the shop right now, um, we also we have a used like a boutique guitar. It's a John Nixon. It's a very strange. It's like a 1934 Dread copy. Um, it's basically like an HD28 with bar frets. It's a weird one. Man, good grief. So good. Oh my gosh. It is so just chunky and boomy. Good lord. This one is like remarkable. Um, There's so much stuff. There is so much stuff. Uh, so much stuff. So. Yeah. I know this is supposed to be a Martin episode, but as our resident Alvarez fanboy, I just felt I needed to step in for this. No, this they, is... They have so knocked it out of the park with this series. I mean, the Masterwork series is great, too. Yeah. Uh, and this is just another step up. Yeah. In, a, in a lot of ways, I... You know, there's... The, my feeling with, with the way these are marketed, I really feel like they should be Masterworks Plus, because it's, it's the same forward shifted bracing that you get in the Masterworks, um, but, you know, they've done just the, the 4A, just silked Sitka tops that are so beautiful. Um, they're, they get them like paper thin. They do get the tops thinner. The finishes are so beautifully thin. Then you get, you know, the ebony fingerboard, the ebony bridge, you know, the blue abalone appointments. Um, it's just, you know, it's like they took everything that was already so good about Masterworks and just said, all right, if we just push it. And nailed it. Anyway, back to work. Yeah, I do think, um, so these guitars, uh, these are 1549. 1449. Um, so all solid, really beautiful. It's a very modern guitar, even though it's a little more subdued, a little more traditional, but it still feels quite modern, sounds pretty modern. Um, the necks are really slim. It's a V profile, but it's, they're pretty, pretty thin. So that's what I've seen. Like as we've had the good old boys and the bluegrassers, they love the sound of it, but it does feel a little thin in the neck uh, for a lot of people. But Yeah. It's like this this sounding guitar at this price did not exist 10 years ago. Okay. Um, the subtle burst. Yeah, I, I like it too. Break it in with mediums out of the gate. No way. I just, I'm not a medium player. They're too heavy for me. I mean... I have recently in the last year moved to like light top medium bottoms for some strings because so I can handle the, it's interesting, I can handle the thicker heavy strings, they don't feel like they cut into my fingers too badly, but the higher strings, I just feel like I have like a laser cut across my finger by the time I'm done playing. Let's see, oh yeah, so uh, Charmed Life uh, CLT 75 pick or Martin Lux 1.0 triangle, yes. Uh, we have two, we have a bunch of the Martins um, of the Lux picks. I also really like the, the Dunlop Prime Tones. I've used these the last couple of years. I used the 1.5 mil triangles. I cannot tell a difference. I own a Chris Thiele. Um, I can't tell a $30 difference in price. Um, Charmed Life makes great picks, and they're really fun guys to work with. The Kaysen picks are really bright sounding. They have, I mean, they sound like finger picks or like fingernails. Um, and they have that really, which I have a 
an acrylic nail right now on my thumb. Um, but they do have that kind of bright, chimey, trebly thing. So, tons of cool guitars. Oh yeah, here, here are the, ooh, good save. So, okay, so here, here are the Lux picks. Um, so there's the triangle one mil, there's the 1.5. And um, so, super exciting. Oh, I love hearing the giggles that come out of opening new guitars. So there's, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Oh, and the bevel. It's the that's the little Alvarez jumbos. This this legitimately did just come out of the case, more or less in two. It's not white, but it's it's Close. closer than it could have been. Interesting. That's such a this one. Um, Alvarez, they send you these emails, and it's usually on Thursdays they'll do these deals where they drop stuff. And money shot out of our pockets. <laughs> They're like, check these out. And we're like, we'll take two. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so good. So, so yeah. You know. Such a cracking good show tonight slash today because you're you're in Scotland. It is tonight. But thank you. This has been really fun. Lots of people, o over a hundred people the whole time on the show. Um, I can 100% hear a difference from the prime tone and the blue chips. Agree that you can't compare a few cents or dollars with $35. You can hear a difference from the prime tone and blue chips between the two. I I did a blind thing the other day. Like, I was wearing goggles. I have these blind, like, welding goggles that I've made to, like the Andertons ones. I've never used them, right? Hang on. I made them, I used them on one video. And then the brand that had me make the video did not like that I could instantly tell which was a Martin and which was their guitar. If you're a patron, you know, because this video is available to patrons only. But, uh, yeah, they got, they got grumpy when I was, like, instantly. Not even, not even a close comparison. I knew which was which. And the other guitar was more expensive, but I knew which one was a Martin. So we do have a couple D18s coming. We have a D18. We also have a D18 Amber Tone coming. We have an HD28 and a D28 coming. We've got an OM28 coming at some point this year. And then we've got a D35. Um, and uh, most of those are open. we got a couple people interested. Yeah, it's got a... Look at like that. A, I mean, there, I, oh, there's no there's, bracing there's on no the back. There's no bracing, so it's, a, it's an arch or like a press top. Yeah, that's like an old guild back. trick. Yeah. And this is like, is it... Uh, Zero coat or what is it? That should be walnut because it's a 95. Yeah, should be the cedar and walnut. Oh, I think. I'm so maybe it's just stained. Yeah, dark. that's crazy. Cool. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see. The Alvarez guys posted a video last week comparing their handmade line to these. They concluded. These give you 90% of the handmade experience and sound quality and play playability for half the price. I, I would... We both have that, like, All right, the yeah. emo... Yeah. Go date ourselves when we play the entire transatlanticism album. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, is this somebody? Anyway, okay. Right. So, uh, so the Alvarez. Um, I think this to the this to the Yairis. Yeah, I would agree. It's probably 85, 90 yeah. percent. There's a there's a there's a thing that happens on the other guitars. Like the whole back and sides, you feel it. Oh, you, like you feel it. You feel it in your spine as you're playing it. Like yeah. it, your whole body becomes part of the instrument. And yeah, it, and these are really, really good. But they don't quite do that. Yeah, it's. I. I mean, I've always. I remember someone once telling me that the last five percent of quality costs ninety five percent of of the price. I would agree with and, that. And I think that's that's the thing. I mean. What they're doing is they're using yeah. so much of what, and, and Martin does this too with their guitars. It's it's all of that institutional knowledge of, of ha having built guitars at the high end and figuring out how to roll that down and, and making it, making elements of it attainable at, at these different price points. 
but the really high-end guitars, I mean, for Yairi, they're handmade, and there's something in each instrument that just feels, I don't know, it's almost like a, like a baseball mitt that you've had your whole life. You just put it on your hand and it fits. It is insane, like when you get uh, mirrors inside, we put an LR Bags Hi-Fi in one of the Yairi OMs, and just how precise and clean yeah. all the carpentry is, yeah. um, like the, the ebony insert that all, they do under the top. It's, yeah. And it's all handmade. Yeah. I mean, they're using, you know, power tools and power drills and, and you know, drill presses and but it's not band like saws, laser but it's not laser cut. It's not CNC. You know, the people are spoke shaving the necks by hand. Mm -hmm. You know, it really is traditional guitar craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. And scalloping the braces and then tapping the tops to tune them. I mean, it, it is so, so geeky, old school craftsmanship, mm -hmm. but then trying to push that with like the direct couple bridges and, yeah. and all of those sorts of things. I like, yeah, I like that level of that level of craftsmanship, and there's still like room to innovate and change. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah Yuri is still so modern, but yeah. Okay, so someone asked about Eastman. If we sell, um, hang on, let's see. Uh, do you carry Eastman? We do we carry do. Eastman. We've got we've got a bunch of stuff um, from Eastman. I still really like them, particularly if people want the really traditional recipes of guitars. If you want a slope shoulder, sunburst, J45-ish guitar, the E10SS is remarkably good for 1349 or something. Um, the cases that Eastman come with, that's like one of my yeah. things that really surprised me. Um, but yeah, I think we, we've been torn. I love Martins, Chris loves Alvarez, and for us as guitar, running a guitar shop, I think the worst thing you can do is pretend. So like I, I get enthusiastic about Alvarez, mm -hmm. but I like really get nerdy about Martins. Mm -hmm. um, with Eastman, we really like them. They fit a good place. Um, but now that we have Martin, some of that stuff in the road series, I have to be careful what I say here. I. Eastman mandolins, amazing. Eastman, the PCHs, the E1s, the E2s, that's where they really shine. Yeah, and, and I think all the way up and down their line, I mean, the, the E10s, even the E20s and things that we've had, they're, they're great guitars. I, I, think, yeah. I think, you know, pound for dollar, yeah. guitar for the money, they're exceptional. Yeah. Um, so... You know, I I don't have anything bad to say about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we we carry Eastman, and I, I talked about Eastman more. Mm -hmm. Didn't uh, Eastman get bought out by Martin? Not that I know of. That would be news to us. Yeah, that would be. Uh, that would really change the world if that was true. No one I've heard connected very closely to either of those companies has said that, so I doubt that it's true. Um, but. Gator did get bought by Sweetwater. So, yeah, so, you know, things. But, yeah. All right, what's Chris playing? What's Chris playing guitar-wise? What's Chris playing musically? This is Vince um, that comes in here a good bit. Is it? No, hang on. Vince Vince? Vince Fielding. I think, yeah, this is Vince that comes in here. This is the new Alvarez, the mini jumbo. What's the... You know, the LGE95 CEARSHB. That's one thing that he, that Alvarez does where I'm like, just call it the Kevin. Like, just <laughs> give it a name. Like, make it shorter. <laughs> See, he can decipher Martin serial numbers. Oh, yeah, they just make sense to me. Right, exactly. Well, so, and part of it is I've just stared at these. No, no, LJ, no. Little Jumbo, 95 is your walnut back and sides with your cedar top. E means electric. Yeah, yeah. So C for the cutaway, E for the electric, and then uh, the R is the armrest bevel, and then the SHB is shadow burst. It. Okay, so it, it makes sense. It, it I, makes sense if you know what all the components if are. If I get a running. Well, Martin will do stuff where they just like <laughs> stop doing what, like it used to be like one digit means solid top, two digits means all solid, but now they're kind of playing with that. Um, so anyway, um, Larry is partial to Yamaha and Alvarez. Yeah, we haven't talked about Yamaha. Oh, yeah, we also, we're I also really... Yamaha dealers. I, and man, I got to, Yamaha also is just, they're killing it. Seriously. So, so good. 
The, we, we've had so many of the, the FSTAs. Like, they came in. They went out right away this week. The, the LLs have all done exceedingly well. The red label reissues. Yep. The, the, the FS5, the F the FG5, the, FGX. The A1 series has the been A's great for us. The A's have been, and, you know, yeah, I mean, and they sound great. Mm-hmm. They're consistent. They're, there are so many good guitars out there right now. Yeah. That's where, like, there are brands that we've had to, like, back off of. Like, we backed off of Breedlove because we're like, well, Alvarez is doing stuff that we like in that world yeah. a lot better. We were picking up Eastman. So it is interesting. Like, no brand, no shop can carry all the stuff. Like, we're moving yeah. towards... And you said this the other week, like we're moving towards the hometown music being a curated shop. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it, it, it's impractical for small shops. Like we can't be Sweetwater or Guitar Center. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. I mean, we do everything that we can to compete on a cost basis with them, but then provide mm-hmm. service, you know, where what we can do is we can within the brands that we're in love with, we can find those those absolute gems yeah, yeah. and speak to them. Because that's so, like, we don't carry, like, there's a whole bunch of Yamaha stuff that we don't that, carry, we don't probably care. are not going to, but we're going to pick out, like, the yeah. just, I mean, what, what I said to you the other day is, like, I want everything we sell to just be a murderer. Yeah. Like, it is <laughs> the best, like, the most exciting, the coolest stuff. Yeah. Um, and that that's what I'm excited is like the Sonics are great for Fender at 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. Like you start picking every price point, we get to have stuff that's really exciting and cool. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Uh, which guitar is better, a J45 or an E10 SS? I mean a J45. I mean yeah, like like a good solid Gibson J45. Yeah. Especially you know classic era. But but the thing but is, even, if you're saying you know, like a good current one, I want to buy one in 30 days and I have you know 1500 bucks. Well, get an Eastman. It's your only option. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> right. um, I, I think most people that buy Eastmans, they are a bit of a substitute or they're a stopgap. Yeah. Right. And Eastman would even kind of say that, like, they want people to look at them and say, like, look, it's Torrified Adirondack Spruce and it's, you know, Honduran back and sides. And you start comparing that, you're like, oh, well, that would be a true vintage. Those are five thousand dollars. Right. So anyway, I really like Eastmans. I think the Eastman electric guitars are really. They're overlooked. They're so nice. They're so nice. overlooked. They're so good. Yeah. You know, I mean, honestly, uh, not trying to throw shade at Gibson, but if I was in the market for a Les Paul right now, oh, yeah. I would buy the Eastmans. Yeah. The, I would. The I 59, just, we have a 57 and a 59 over and here. they're so good. And they do the things that you would do. They put, like, Lawler pickups in one of them and then Seymour Duncan 59s in the other. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we got to go because um, we have... I mean, there are so many guitars in this room that have to be put away. So. And people that we need to talk to. All right. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out. Um, if you want any of these guitars, send us an email. Give us a call. Um, yeah, we'll get back to the emails as quickly as we can. And we're shipping stuff all around the country. So thanks for hanging out. I'm Jeremy. This is Guitar Hunter. Uh, see you later. And now I scramble to turn things off. UPS is here dropping more stuff off.